Paul Collier, and thanks for inviting me onto this uh, G20 panel. Um, I'm going to be talking about the implications of the coronavirus for G20 cooperation and coordination. Uh, I'm going to do it in, in two blocks. One is the immediate response to containing the virus itself, uh, and then um, some remarks on the planning the economic recovery um, uh, once we've got the virus uh, under control. So let's start with um, responding to, to the virus itself. And there's a very useful um, new concept called radical uncertainty, actually a revival of an old concept. Um, there's a new, new book out just in March by John King uh, and John K. and Merlin King, um, both world famous uh, economists, uh, Merlin King, the former governor of the Bank of England, John Kay, the founder of the Institute for Fiscal Studies. Um, and the, the essence of radical uncertainty is um, situations where the unknown unknowns and the known unknowns are so severe that uh, we can't rely on any model. We are outside the world in which a model applies. And uh, the first lesson of radical uncertainty um, for coronavirus is that if you don't know what to do, you need to find out um, uh, as fast as possible. And there are, there are two big ways of, of finding out. Um, and one uh, is creating enough variation in policy responses so that you can learn from that variation. Um, and that's a really important and kind of unlikely insight because the, the, the natural instinct for coordination amongst the G20 is all do the same thing. But it's actually very important that in our responses, we do different things. Um, not only that, but we need to do different things that then are allowed each to play out without contamination from, uh, from, from, from neighboring countries. And so we actually need um, not only to encourage variation, um, but to close uh, the movement of people between countries that have got varying policies, whilst of course keeping open uh, the routes for goods. Um, so, for example, in Europe, Sweden is taking a very different policy from most other countries, and that is something that's very, very uh, useful for everybody. Um, Sweden's actually uh, undertaking inadvertently a public good. Um, we won't know quite possibly for some years which of these strategies is best, but we certainly won't know without variation. Um, uh, not only have we got variation in policies, uh, we've also got extreme variation in circumstances. So I work a lot of the time on, on Africa, and Africa's circumstances are totally different. Um, so that the virus, virus will play out very differently. The, the demographics are completely different. Um, uh, Africa's got very many fewer old people, very many more um, young children already in inadequate health. Uh, and so my suspicion is that a lot of the people needing medical attention will not be elderly people in cities, they'll be young kids in rural areas. And so we've got to be very careful that we don't encourage copying of what is happening in the uh, in Europe, the OECD, the close down. Um, Africa's really, I think, not in a position to close down uh, social uh, contact. Um, uh, and the, the danger is that by attempting to do that in the cities, you damage the economy and you move a great exodus of people back to rural areas, bringing contagion with them. Um, so these are examples of variation. Uh, the second way of finding out 
and it is gathering data. And here, we do need coordination. Um, every member of the G20 should be encouraged to do regular random samples of the population so that we can, we can see both what the incidence is week by week and how, um, how the, the disease is spreading. Um, the present in most societies, we know neither because we've not been conducting these randomized samples. The samples don't even have to be very large as long as the samples are well chosen. Um, the, the final thing we need to find out, very obviously, is, is how to do vaccines and how to do uh, reliable and fast tests. Um, and they require a lot of research. Um, and research on these things is a global public good. Once we've got a good vaccine, everybody will use it. Um, but, um, but only one team will actually discover it. Um, and so what we need now is to really scale up um, that research. Uh, and the market forces don't encourage that sufficiently powerfully. Um, that's why normally um, there are really very long lags uh, in finding vaccines because the commercial incentive is to go cautiously, not to invest in scaling up until you've got a patent. So again, the G20 should be encouraging every government to um, push up money towards its own pharmaceutical companies and universities to encourage them, if necessary, force them um, to spend more than they would otherwise do on this research. Um, and the same applies for, for testing. Uh, finally, let me turn from the response to, uh, to, the, to the virus to the recovery once we've got the virus under control. And uh, here we need quite clearly a coordinated fiscal expansion. Again, the fiscal expansion will be a global public good because fiscal expansion in one country will benefit others, it will increase uh, the rate of recovery in other countries. And so again, it's likely to be underprovided. Um, different countries have very different capacity for fiscal expansion. Um, the one in, uh, uh, Africa has very limited capacity, at the other end, um, Germany has enormous capacity. And so this is a case where we need both coordination and solidarity. Coordination says everybody's got to do it. Solidarity says the ones that are best able to withstand that uh, fiscal hit uh, should be doing this, both in their own countries and uh, internationally. So I very much hope that Germany makes big contributions, for example, to the World Bank and supports the IMF uh, in, in scaling up um, uh, fiscal support. Um, the um, final point is that in some countries, uh, fiscal expansion isn't enough because um, in a typical African country, the government doesn't really have much of a mechanism to reach um, the poorest households. Uh, and there we need to innovate. Um, fortunately, in Africa, almost every household um, has a mobile phone. Uh, and, and so it's on a mobile phone payment system. And it's easy, technically, to run those payment systems backwards and distribute small amounts of money to all households on a regular basis. And during the phase in which Africa is really, uh, the economy is declining and um, poverty levels are going up and stress is going up, um, with people not able to work, now is the time when we use that innovative device. And again, the World Bank or the IMF can channel money, uh, in this case, to uh, these networks of mobile phones uh, with the money used to make these small regular payments. Um, that again is an example of um, 
using radical uncertainty to say, think outside the confines of the models. We're facing an unprecedented situation and we'll need uh, innovative ideas. Thank you very much.